Hello everyone, this is Zook and today I'm bringing you a new type of video. This is going to be my first arts and crafts video in which I make a sketchbook or any sort of book, basically a book from, from start to finish. Now the reason why I chose this hobby, and I didn't, it's not something that I do all the time in my free time, but it's, it's nice when you create something and it's actually quite rewarding when you accomplish something that is you know, quite difficult and takes a bit of knowledge to do. Um, but the main reason why I chose this is because I have a lot of respect for these, uh, I wouldn't say ancient, but old crafts, you know, they have been lost in time due to industrialization and people don't really know how stuff is made nowadays just because everything is made by machines. But before and to this day, actually, some people make their uh, living doing this sort of stuff. So, you know, it's just fascinating for me. And uh, it's something that's very cheap, really, to take up and doesn't really, you know, drain your wallet that much. So I think it's... Uh, it's cool if you're into that sort of thing. So this, I'm just going to be showing the process in this video and not really going into details. Like I'm not going to make a tutorial out of this because quite frankly, I'm sure people don't really, you know, they can look stuff up for themselves. I'm just going to talk about the process and types of uh, alternations there are between what I'm doing and what other people do. So basically a book is made out of signatures. That's one way to do it. Signatures are groups of paper, uh, papers stacked on top of each other and folded like you see me handling over here which are sewn together using a special type of thread and a, um, a binder's needle, which is basically like a, a thicker needle. That's it, really, a, a bigger, thicker needle. You can use it for leatherworking as well. Um, and the type of stitch I'm using is called a Coptic stitch or an alternation of the Coptic stitch, which is meant to tie the papers uh, to each other within the signature and tie the signatures to each other within the actual book. And so, you know, you go around the loops and it, it's very sturdy really like it's pretty it's pretty good for doing this sort of thing of course i learned this off the internet it's not like <laughs> you know it's anyone can learn this sort of stuff so um this whole process took about 12 hours including the drying time for the glue basically the glue is applied to the spine which is where the stitch is now like the book is made out of the spine you got the front cover and the back cover and that's kind of it then you got the um to f cover pages on the inside and that's kind of it really so i'm pretty much done with sewing them right now and what i'm using there the white instrument is called a bone folder which in the past used to be made of bone but nowadays is made of plastic and various materials like teflon and such basically it's meant to give the the pieces of paper a nice um a crisp crease I guess you can use your nails you can use any sort of blunt instrument really but the bone folder is what's traditionally used and I actually have an old one that's made of uh, of a cow bone it's not that one that one I bought recently but uh, the reason they're made of bone is that because it once it's polished it gives it a very smooth surface and so it glides along the paper really well so right there I'm putting the book in a uh, in a press I made from just two boards which I drilled holes holes in and I'm about to apply the glue but first I'm using a um, a surgical scalpel to make some little cuts on the spine which are meant to basically absorb the glue and provide a little tooth for the glue to attach to and so after applying uh, a layer I usually wait a bit and wait for it to dry off and then I apply several more uh, two or three or four layers are kind of standard for this sort of thing from what I've noticed you can also use your fingers you, there's no real need to use a brush but I just didn't want to get glue all over myself the glue I'm using is called PVA glue and it's basically standard book binding glue um, it's standard really glue for anything like it's in Romanian it's called aracet I'm sure other uh, languages have something similar but uh, I just bought like an entire kit from from the US which arrived recently so I'm just using it for the sake of using it it's a, it's available like all over the place now what I'm doing there is attaching a headband which is basically a, just a purely decorative piece that goes on the head of the spine which is meant to just hide the the endings and what I'm putting on there is called a mull and a mull is basically a textile uh, fabric that's meant to just strengthen and reinforce the spine and attach the uh, the body of the book to the two cover pages which I'm gonna um, glue on pretty pretty soon so what I'm doing there is just putting on several more layers of glue on top of the mole just to be sure that it's absorbed uh, fairly well the mole is is rigid by itself but when it gets wet from the glue it, it becomes very bendy and so can easily be shaped into something so after a few hours uh, the glue has dried off this is happening the second day actually and so that's uh, just a, a semi-thick piece of cardboard 
from which I'm going to make the two cover pages, which I'm cutting out right now. What I'm using for cutting is um, a metal ruler, and that's like it's a must, really. If you if you're planning on cutting anything, like plastic and wooden rulers are a no no, a big no no for cutting anything, because the the blade will scratch it and it will. Uh, deform the edge while with a metal ruler you don't really have that problem so as with anything in life doing this process i learned that there's a, a good way to fold paper and a bad way <laughs> you know it's 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 not something that most people uh, give a second thought to so those are going to be the cover pages basically one page is going to be glued onto the body and the other one is going to be glued onto the uh, cover right so now that that's done i'm going to get on to uh, trimming the ends of the book. Now, this is an operation that can fail very, very easily. Basically, what what you do when the the book is almost finished is give it a sort of a straight edge. That's kind of the the initial purpose anyway. But I sort of fucked it up, and it ended up being kind of rough, uh, mainly because the paper itself is so thick, and it's not quite the right kind of paper for this uh, this purpose. But I don't really mind. It gives it more of a an artisanal look, like it's handmade, so it's no big deal. But yeah, the idea is to get a perfectly straight edge, everything being flush, everything being uh, you know, even, perfectly even. Yeah, that didn't quite happen to me here. So I, I even cut it twice and it still didn't come out the way I wanted to. But I don't mind. In the end, it's fine. It doesn't really matter. So now I'm going to make the covers. And what I'm using is just a thick piece of cardboard I found in the house. Traditionally, for this sort of stuff, you can make it out of binders board, which is a bought at book binding supplies stores, which is not something that Romania has, because I did search. So I'm just using your standard piece of thick cardboard. And now what I'm going to do is something pretty cool. I'm going to, um, actually, wait, I'm just going to finish doing this first, I suppose. Doom to doom, anytime now. Anytime now. I'm fucking slow with that cutting, I swear to God. I'm using the bone folder on the edges, because whenever you cut uh, in cardboard, it gives it a little bit of a lifted edge where the blade sinks in. And so by using the bone folder, you don't get those irregularities on the edge and it smooths it out fairly well. So what I'm using there is my custom lettering signature that I made a few days ago. And I'm just gonna trace it, trace over it with some, with a pencil. And, um, and then I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife to cut out a few layers of cardboard on the front cover, which I'm gonna use to deboss it once I apply the the fabric and the fabric which I'm going to use for the cover is going to be a an imitation leather. I have like hundreds of rolls of this stuff for uh, my business. Basically, when we make planners and calendars, of course, it's put into a machine and everything is made automatically. But it works for making stuff by hand as well. It's not really it's very thin, so it's not really as good as leather, and it does crack if you bend it too much. So I didn't want to waste leather on this thing though. <clears throat> so basically, what I'm doing is just using a surgical scalpel and a pair of tweezers to just like uh, remove thin layers of cardboard until I get to a, a good depth inside the actual cardboard without actually penetrating it to the other side, of course. So that takes a bit of time, but it's it's with care, with a bit of care and attention. It's uh, it's no problem whatsoever. You can make some pretty pretty cool stuff in this style if you have the patience to, and a very sharp knife, of course. So there's the material. It's uh, going to be a, a very dark blue sort of imitation leather. Now I'm just tracing the spine and the covers and leaving a little bit of space for the spine. That's The spine is actually not glued on. It's left free. It's only the covers that are glued on. And I'm giving it a bit of a, a 2.5 centimeter edge there just to have something to fold over. And I'm trimming the corners off, which are going to be folded over themselves. And, and you'll see in a second what I mean. Basically make the, the corners. So now I'm just applying the glue to the cover. And it's not really interesting. And now what I do is basically press down on the leather in the uh, little grooves that I made in the form of my my name, just using the bone folder and whatever blunt uh, object you have, so as to not pierce the the stuff, the the leather imitation. And there's my fat head in the way because why the hell not? So yeah, that took a bit of time. Uh, the cardboard itself is not very smooth, so it's gonna have a pretty rough pattern, as you can see there. I try to get out as many of the bubbles as I could, but you know, one can only do so much with uh, shitty materials. So that's basically it for the covers. Now I'm gonna, just going to glue on the edges. Very simple process, really. I mean, I watched a lot of videos of this stuff before I started to do it, so I sort of learned everything before I even began the process myself, so kind of know it back to front. 
just because I found it kind of fascinating how a lot of people approach this in uh, different ways. So yeah, uh, basically a book press is the most essential thing. Like you got to have something heavy to put on top of it and let it dry off. Now what I'm going to do is just glue on the final cover pages, put them all on, put another layer of glue, slap it on there, use the bone folder to get out any air bubbles, do the same with the front cover, and that's basically going to be it. After that is done, your book is done, you put it in the book press, let it to dry uh, an hour or so, or overnight preferably, and that's going to be it. So yeah, anyway, it's it's a very specific thing. I mean, not everyone would be into something like this. Uh, but for me, I think this is a pretty good idea for uh, giving gifts to people, you know, like making custom stuff with their names inscribed and debossed on the cover or maybe a little drawing of something or some sort of internal joke symbol that you guys have. So, you know, in that sense, it's always nice because people still like to write in the age of iPads, palm pads, iPhones, laptops, all all this techie shit, uh, writing is still actually quite a, an enjoyable activity for a lot of people. And a lot of old school people that even do use these gadgets still use uh, notebooks to write in or uh, keep their daily journals in. So, you know, for me, this is not a useless skill to have. Plus, I learned quite a lot of it about what goes into the process of making these objects because it's in my line of work and I should know how these things are made like this this sort of stuff I do when I work with my other business which is making calendars planners and stuff like I make the design and get sent to the printer and then we get them back you know made from start to finish so it's always good to to learn the in-between steps that go into something like this. Plus, you know, it's a craft that has been around for hundreds upon hundreds of years, and people have made some pretty amazing books and manuscripts uh, using the same processes that I, I myself am using right here. So it's all nice. So yeah, please rate that shit if you enjoyed it, and don't worry, there aren't going to be that many more of these in the future. It depends on whatever hobby I take up. But yeah, I still hope you found it interesting and so... Enjoy the rest of your week, I suppose. See you around.